This is Mrs. Williams here. Today we're going to read a book called Degas and the Little Dancer by Lawrence Anholt. This is one of my favorite art books because it's based on a sculpture that I absolutely love and have seen many times. So here we go. In the middle of a big room in a famous art museum is a beautiful sculpture of a little dancer. She stands with one foot forward, her hands clasped behind her back, and she looks tired and a bit sad. The sculpture was made more than a hundred years ago by an artist called Edward Degas. The sculpture is in the middle of a room where a guard stands. He has a story to tell about the little ballerina. When it is raining outside and people have nowhere else to go, someone is sure to ask him about her. Her name is Marie, said the guard. I look at her standing there every day, and I think I know her pretty well. Marie and her parents were very poor, but Marie dreamed of only one thing. She wanted to be a dancer. Not just any dancer, she wanted to dance in Paris. She wanted to be the most famous ballerina in the Paris Opera House. Marie's father was a tailor and her mother took in laundry. They worked hard and they saved their money until the day Marie was ready to take the entrance exam for the big ballet school. Her father made her a special tutu and her mother wished her luck and tied a long peach colored ribbon in her hair. At the exam, Marie danced as she had never danced before and the old ballet teacher seemed to like her. If we give you a place, you will have to practice very hard. I know, said Marie. I want to be the most famous dancer in the world. Everyone laughed. We'll see about that, said the old teacher. I love these illustrations because they look like they're done with colored pencils. It was the most exciting day of Marie's life. She couldn't wait to tell her family all about it. Something happened that, was, that almost spoiled her happiness. At the back of the big room, someone started shouting. A girl ran past Marie in tears. She was followed by a fierce gray-bearded man dressed in expensive clothing. Why can't you keep still? He shouted. How can I draw you when you keep moving? Marie was frightened. Who is this bad-tempered man? She whispered to the girl next to her. Oh, you will find out if you are a pupil here. That is Degas, a painter of horses and dancers, and he treats them all the same. At the museum, a large crowd had gathered around the statue of the little ballerina. Look at her, said the guard. Look at little Marie. I will tell you something. If you stare at her long enough, she almost seems to move. She, so did she get her place at the ballet school? Someone asked. Oh, yes, said the guard. She got her place all right. She worked hard practicing her pilouettes and what not. In fact, she became so good that the old teacher began to talk about giving her a starting place in the Christmas ballet at the opera house. Marie's dream was coming true, and even old Degas couldn't seem quite so frightening. Every day he turned up with his top hat and his sketchbooks, muttering and talking to everyone. He worked furiously with colored chalks, sketching the girls, the teachers, and the musicians. Keep still, he would shout. Not like that, like this. Then he would show some poor dancer how to hold a pose or how to skip properly. 
Marie had to try hard not to laugh at the sight of the smartly dressed painter on one leg. Sometimes Marie caught a glimpse of his sketches and what she saw made her gasp. <gasps> the drawings almost glowed with color. In the studio were all kinds of girls, but they didn't look like they were ballet stars. Degas had drawn them chattering, posing, uh, tying their laces, adjusting their straps, even reading a newspaper. Marie loved her dancing. She was the first to arrive in the morning and the last to go home. Then one day everything started to go wrong. Marie's father became ill and soon he couldn't work anymore. Her mother took in extra washing, but there simply just wasn't enough money to pay for Marie's classes. Her dreams of becoming a famous dancer were ending. I would love to help you, Marie, said the kind old teacher, but unless you have lessons every day, mm, I will have to give the main part to someone else. Perhaps we could find a little work for you sweeping the floor in the theater. A gruff voice interrupted then. I will give you a few francs if you pose for me. A franc is French money. But you will have to work very hard and not chatter. Do you understand? So Degas began to draw Marie every afternoon. He made her stand absolutely still for such a long time that Marie almost cried, but she didn't dare complain. The money was not enough. It paid for a doctor for her papa, but not for the classes. As the Christmas ballet drew near, she knew she would never have the chance to become famous. When the big night came, poor Marie was not even allowed to watch because Degas wanted to work late. While the other girls laughed and chattered and made themselves ready, Marie was left alone with the artist. Marie, or more irritable than ever, he made her stand, looking up at the ceiling with her hands behind her back. All the dancers were used to this pose, but as Degas worked on and on, Marie began to ache. It's hard to hold that still for so long. It was getting late. Excuse me, Monsieur Degas, Marie whispered. I will have to go home soon. My father is ill and my family will be worried. Family, shouted Degas. Your family will be worried? Do you know who will worry about me? No one, that's who. I have only my work for company and now even my eyesight is leaving me. I'm sorry, Monsieur, I don't understand. Degas worked in silence for a while. He pulled out some clay and he began to work furiously with his long fingers. Then Marie saw a tear in the artist's eye. No, he said more gently, how could you understand? Tell me, Marie, what is the most precious thing to a painter? Your eyes, Monsieur? Exactly my eyes, just like a dancer's legs. You understand? And my poor eyes are sick, Marie. That is why I am working with clay, because I can hardly see what I am doing anymore. Suddenly, Marie felt very sad for the bad-tempered artist. Could this be why he was always angry? Then Degas did something Marie had never seen him do before. He looked up at her and smiled. I'm sorry too, Marie, he said, but look at this sculpture. It is the best thing I have ever done. Thank you, my little dancer. Now you must go home. Marie stepped down. Her legs were weak. She untied the peach-colored ribbon from her hair and she gave it to the old artist. Then he put, she put away her dancing clothes and ran home to her family. In the theater, the crowd clapped and cheered as the curtain came down on the Christmas ballet. 
outside under a pale street light, an old, nearly blind artist struggled getting home. In his hand, he clutched a peach colored ribbon. And so she never did find her dream, someone asked. Wait, said the guard. The story isn't quite finished. Two years later, Marie was helping her mother with the laundry when a letter arrived. It is for you, Marie, said her mother. Marie tore open the envelope. Inside was a ticket and an invitation to a big art museum. On the invitation, someone scribbled, for Marie, the little dancer. Marie and her mother went to the show. The building was very crowded. The walls were hung with brilliantly colored paintings, but the biggest crowd was gathered around a large glass box. Marie pushed through the crowd. Look, she gasped, it's me. Degas had dressed the sculpture in real clothes. No one had seen anything like it before. And in her hair was the peach colored ribbon. It's a beautiful sculpture. It's actually not very tall. And I've seen it and the peach colored ribbon is actually in her hair. It's pretty cool. I hope you guys liked my story and have a great day with whatever learning you do next. Miss you guys all and hope to see you soon.